My guest today is Sarah Sexton. Sarah, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show, David. It's been a while. It's been too long. It was a pleasure to see you in person a couple of weeks ago because I remember a time when we were on the same team, we lived in the same city, we saw each other multiple times per week, and then nothing for and then nothing. years. Yeah, the pandemic really impacted people in a lot of ways. Uh, it hit me pretty hard, too. I, I definitely um, took the isolation um, a little harder than most, I think. Um, so when they started telling everyone you need to socially isolate so that you don't catch a virus and that could be potentially deadly, it was like, OK, so I can't see anyone socially. And like I think psychologically that also impacted seeing people virtually too so like i i really really withdrew in a lot of ways for a long time definitely a different dynamic interacting with people virtually versus interacting in person i, I, I here's what i always thought is virtual interactions like we're having now or like through social media or email whatever um they're great for keeping relationships going so if you and i don't see each other for a while it's great that we can keep the conversation going while we can't but relationships happen in the real world that's how you really connect with people and at least i need that for at least some of the time yeah and not to mention um people only have so much energy people have a finite amount of energy for um taking care of themselves taking care of their loved ones and keeping up with relationships and uh the 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 science behind how people were mentally affected by um, being told that we were in danger constantly for two years it led to a lot of burnout and um, people couldn't describe why they had such little energy um, to do tasks and um, like it, it wasn't until much later that some psychologists started publishing some articles about how like um, fight or flight reflexes, if your body thinks that it, it is in danger for longer than the amount it takes to be chased by a saber toothed tiger and get to safety. Um, like if you prolong that feeling of being unsafe for a very extended amount of time, it has horrible ramifications on the body. So like people would, would be really wondering like, why am I so tired? Why am I so fatigued? Why do I have brain fog? Why can't I answer my emails? Why can't I answer my text messages? Like people weren't understanding how they were being affected because there was no language around it at the beginning of the pandemic. Nobody had ever been through anything like this before. Exactly. There's no point of no frame of reference. We can't say, oh, this is just like that thing a few years ago, only more so. No, this was very different. It's very different. And um, I think when I mean, I, I'd never even heard of the Spanish flu of 1918 until everybody started making comparisons to it. Like oh, it was it was the time, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> You're was, older than me, but not by I that was much. There, Gandalf, a thousand years ago. <laughs> I was there. I was there when they refused to wear their masks, Gandalf. <laughs> yeah. So, um, not to mention the way uh, that, like, the whole issue became political um, in in the worst way. Um, like, wearing masks became politicized. It 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 just dragged everything out so much longer it dragged everything out so much longer than it needed to be so you know uh we could have we could have paid everybody to stay home for two weeks but uh instead we've dragged it out for two years right. how did you handle it what was your coping mechanism so the background behind us is from a video game that i started playing in the pandemic uh, it's called animal crossing new horizons Here's okay. my my little character wearing my matching my matching sweatshirt. I see the red hair. Yep, and the the nice headphones. Nice, looks just like yeah. You. Thanks, I worked hard on it. <laughs> so I uh, I actually customized the sweatshirt that my character is wearing. So this this is a game that has kept me entertained during the pandemic to this day. 
And I didn't even play it when it launched, which was in March at the very, very beginning of the pandemic. Like it almost it almost perfectly lined up with the pandemic on the timeline, which was, you know, really lucky for Nintendo, who produced this game. Uh, they sold a lot of Nintendo Switches and a lot of copies of Animal Crossing. The, the timing of like, here's a video game that you can play at home to pass the time because you're going to be at home a lot. Um, it, here's here's a simulation about actually being able to go outside and interact with friends and oh, and like so so animal crossing for for those who don't know it's kind I of like a i'm not a i'm not a gamer i just have a screenshot of you <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i was hoping to do some live streaming um but the inputs were wrong so that's okay we've just got 30 minutes to chit chat today anyway but like this game has been really good for my mental health um and and i i'd like to explain why um like this, this is how this is an an example of how I use technology to stay in touch with my friends, and also um, like manage how much how much of my mental health is affected by the outside world. So um, a lot of people say that video games are a form of escapism, and sometimes that's true. So you you have to balance. You have you really have to find the balance in your life of things you can control and things you can't control. And the, a lot of what went on in the outside world over the last two years were things that were outside of my control. And also, um, I'm an empath, which means I'm really attuned to feeling the way that other people are feeling. So mm -hmm. being uh, a compassionate, empathetic person um, when times are hard is really tough because it's kind of like i i feel the weight of the world on my shoulders i i i carry too much burden than is healthy for me um because if i were to feel the pain and despair of of all the suffering of all the world i wouldn't be able to function right. so my challenge is finding ways to um like figure out how to keep my mental health uh that in, in a way that allows me to continue to function yeah. and uh, and 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 not get too bogged down by um things i can't control that's really been a struggle for me over the last two years is this whole concept of like things i can control and things i can't control uh it it made me angry like uh it, it would make me very frustrated that um, people would say, oh, you know, just do yoga and meditate and go for walks and just focus on what you can control because it made me feel powerless. Like It's easy to say that. But yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's like it's not enough. Yeah. It's we need to be doing more. We need to be fighting. Um, so it, I was frustrated because I had a lot of fight in me. Um, I wanted to fight things like politically and medically and socially and wanted to fight for social justice and civil rights and um, for, for politicians to take the pandemic much more seriously. But uh, I, I just felt like an ant on a picnic blanket with the amount of power that I specifically was able to wield in the world. So it was very stressful. And when I needed to kind of take a break and recenter myself uh animal crossing was there for me so it's a very addictive game <laughs> no, no, so animal crossing this is a uh, a multiplayer game you said it was social right yeah so it's a multiplayer game and here i can actually show you the cover of it um it's animal crossing new horizons and it's all kinds of um information on the back about like how will you live your island life and so you can craft and customize your world. You can celebrate the seasons. The weird thing about Animal Crossing is that um, the, the the screenshot in the back says July 15th. That's because I changed the settings on my Nintendo Switch. Uh, but the game has a clock that matches the clock on the on the device you're playing it on. So when it says celebrate the seasons, it stays up to date in the real world with you. So they so want it to be always summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wanted to do some some summer activities, so I kind of fast forwarded a little bit. Um, well, time but... isn't meaning anymore for me now that uh, exactly. That the That's... I keep finding myself saying, you know, last summer I was doing this thing, and then I realized, wait, that wasn't last summer. That was like two years ago. Exactly. That's another thing. Perspective of time. 
<laughs> I completely agree. Um, time has no meaning during the pandemic. It's all just uh, become blurred together. And that's that's another thing. It's like Animal Crossing, it does kind of help me keep track of time. It's actually helped with my time management, too, because there's there's little daily activities I like to do every day. And I've I've done them so many times and now I can predict how long it'll take. Uh, now I know, OK, I need approximately 30 minutes, about a half an hour every day to check my mail, dig up some uh, some treasure and talk to some friends and some villagers and like earn some points. There's there's little things that you can do every day. And uh, I, I figured out I need about a half an hour to do that, which is good for my time management, too. Um, and the fact that the game is locked to the real world unless you change the settings on your machine, uh, that's also it gives you this this kind of this like the it, it helps you build a relationship with the passage of time, which was really difficult during the pandemic. It's like, OK, if I miss it, um, I can't really go back and 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 do it again, especially if it's locked, because. You can go, you can travel through time on the Switch, but some of the events, the special events are, are time locked by Nintendo. So like, mm -hmm. if you miss it, you really miss it. Mm -hmm. uh, which is also a big commitment for a video game. That's another thing, like, I've never played Animal Crossing. This this franchise has had many iterations throughout the decades. It's, it's a very old franchise from Nintendo. It's been around a long time and I never got into it because I never wanted to make the commitment of like, there's these yeah, you're familiar with beanie babies i remember I, beanie babies, yeah, you I remember guess. beanie babies i was a big beanie babies kid um there's there's animals like like cute beanie baby like animals that that can talk to you and they're your neighbors in this world and it's like this this game is a really big commitment because they sort of develop friendship bonds with you and if you don't talk to them for a week or two it, like you put the game down and lose interest and then pick it up again weeks or months or even years later they're they know you were gone like they have <laughs> artificial intelligence and they're like where have you been i missed you so much and it's like oh i don't think i can emotionally handle that but <laughs> the pandemic gave me the time to slow down and actually commit to something like that so i've been interacting with these villagers for two years and that is another thing that has kind of strengthened my emotional well-being and mental health because like i used to be a really big commitment of phobe not too many years ago and the like the pandemic forcing me to slow down and confront some of these like like inner issues uh i've i've actually gotten over some some fear of commitment sort of stuff which is pretty big for me so this is more than just escapism this was actually a way of exercising parts of your uh, your self yeah that you felt like needed a uh, boost yeah but and i i wasn't even aware of it but i i knew that i was a afraid of a video game that sounded like a huge time commitment right. and i knew that i was afraid of disappointing virtual creatures <laughs> but i i couldn't tell you why until like un until now um uh and, and hopefully everybody has found a chance to go to some therapy throughout the pandemic too because i think that's really a, just a, a requirement um but uh, yeah it's like it, it was tied to a lot of other things and this this game has helped me grow in a weird way because like it's made for children but it's made me grow as a person interesting yeah a therapy is another thing that uh, technology is has enabled here uh, because oh, that's yeah not too long ago i was going through a stressful time and uh it's yeah. it's really difficult to get in my car and drive to an office and wear mm -hmm. a skin mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. 7 p.m on a tuesday i can just connect and there's yeah. the, um, it's not quite as good as real person, but still we've developed a relationship that was, uh, yeah. we couldn't otherwise have done. And he's in Nevada as it turns yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The, the, the telehealth teleconferencing, um, it's, that's exactly right. You don't have to deal with the commute. Um, I, uh, I wonder if I could get my therapist to play Animal Crossing. I don't think so because I, I have to like mail her a Nintendo Switch in the game and it's like 60 bucks and the Switch itself is <laughs> like 200 bucks. It's <laughs> yeah. Maybe she's yeah. already a gamer. Maybe she's got one. Maybe she's already a gamer. She's pretty into horses too. So she's kind of got like a like a real life farm. Um, so the 
the the needing a virtual one might not really hold her interest as much as it does the rest of us. Um, but it's very it's very much a multiplayer game to answer your original question. Yeah, so you're um, you're interacting with some virtual characters that have artificial intelligence, but you're also interacting with uh, your existing friends and new friends that you've made through the game, right? That's exactly right. Tell me a little about that. Yeah, so I find it easier for conversation to flow if I like invite someone to my island. So they take their switch and like they'll they'll just have their their little switch in their hands and they'll be playing their game and uh, they can take their character to their airport and fly them to my island over the internet. And hmm. then their little character can run around with my little character and like our little chibi cartoon guys can be running around. Um, and it, it, it kind of like, it gives me something to do with my hands. It gives me something to look at. Um, so I'll like, I'll just be just hanging out, having a chit chat. It's like, like a coffee date. There's actually a, a museum in the game that has a, a coffee shop on the, on the second floor upstairs. And you can invite people. They arrive through your airport. They walk down the dock to the entrance to your island. They can stroll through your plaza. And you can invite them to the coffee shop. And you can sit down and have little virtual cups of coffee. And uh, I'm usually just uh, like on a speakerphone phone call with them while they're on my island. And we're like interacting through our avatars, but talking on voice chat. And I... Um, it gives me something to talk about. I'd be like, hey, let me show you this thing I built. And and uh, I'll go I can go over to their island. I love getting ideas from what other people have done with their islands, the way they've decorated the place. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I find it a lot less awkward than just having a regular phone call. Uh, the other thing is regular phone calls with no visual input, um they're they're just harder for me to parse because like just just the audio doesn't always come through very well. So, it's. I just find it easier to to use this particular technology as like I don't know, like Second Life or Sims or some other simulation of of living life when you can't really go outside because it's not safe. Yeah. If I, so, if you invite me to your island and you invite our friend Scott to your island on the same day, do Scott and I then interact with each other? Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. You guys would see each other's avatars. So, so then you can you can introduce people or you know get together yeah. old friends or new friends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can have parties. You can have party. Oh, party. You can have parties. Yeah, <laughs> how many how many people can you have? I think uh, like so either eight or sixteen. Sixteen is a bit much. Probably like up to eight people can all gather on one island. I think. Uh, that sounds good. Yeah, more than eight, it's probably hard to. Yeah, the frame. Really end up the... breaking up into small groups anyway. That's way. And the that's way it works in the real world. That's true, and also the frame rate goes down. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, you probably have a massive computer, though. That's uh, no, it's on a Nintendo. Remember, remember, it's a, it's on one of these. It's, it's not through your computer. It's through the Switch. Okay. It's not through the computer. It's just through this. Play, I am not a gamer, so <laughs> always uh, I don't have. No, it it just has to fit on this one piece of hardware. And I will say that my island is so full of furniture that um, it lags when I run across the island. The the furniture like lags when it loads. So like my frame rate is very low. <laughs> I've got a Got a bit of a clutter problem. You're a hoarder. You're a virtual hoarder. Not as bad as my aunt. I got my aunt <laughs> addicted to this game over Christmas, and she she's a collector. I'm not as much of a collector as my aunt is, but it's been it's, it's been a yeah. collector and hoarder. It's just a matter of degree. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not a hoarder. That I just I just I, I, I hoarder would say. <laughs> I love the way everything looks, but. I do get rid of things. All right, that's good. <laughs> I'm not judging. <laughs> no, no, no. That like that. That is a psychological issue that people do have, and uh, um, I I don't have that. I just wish that the game could keep up with my decoration style. Yeah, right, the next generation of uh, Switch will. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think they've been uploading patches because, like, I used to be out of memory on the Switch because um, I'd try to record a 30 second video clip and um, it would not. It would it would not have enough memory to save the clip, but like I didn't I didn't clear that much memory. Um, but now I'm able to record a lot more videos and take more screenshots. I was like, what? I didn't fix this. So I think that they Nintendo's pushing patches 
that I think are updating the hardware, um, software. I think they're like either updating the firmware or the software, like from Makes afar. Sense. Makes sense. Microsoft has that. Yeah. Well, this is cool, uh, and you seem to be doing well. So uh, this and uh, the the whatever else you're doing to keep your your mind straight, and then maybe the fact that we appear to be coming out of this, maybe not as rapidly as we'd like, but things yeah. are now than they for the world than they were say a year and a half ago yeah no. weirdly weirdly enough um actually catching it uh from one csc week a couple of weeks ago um right. catching catching covid um sure. but having enough vaccines and boosters that it felt more like a cold um that that gave me the perspective of this i caught it and it was not a life-threatening disease to me so that I'm still going to continue to be careful. I still wear my mask outside as often as I possibly can. Right. Um, but I'm less afraid of it now. Yeah, I'm, I'm the sort of the same way. I, I might, I'm all about managing the risk rather than eliminating the risk. So I still go out on my bike every day and I have my mask. When I stop riding, I, I put it over my face when I'm close to people. Yeah. Um, don't, I don't stay inside. And, and I did get COVID as well. And I've had four, you know, the double uh, double boosters. So I've had four shots. And it, it, it's strong evidence that the vaccines work because my symptoms were very mild. That's, I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you seem well also. I'm glad to hear that you're still still out and about, still riding your bike. I love the pictures that I see you post. <laughs> Thanks. It's I'll put some more today. I went out lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. I do need to get outside in the real world some more, <laughs> more than just just the screenshots. <laughs> well, Sarah, it was been a pleasure talking with you as always. I want you to have a great day and stay safe. Thank you. You too. And thanks for giving me the opportunity to destigmatize talking about mental health in a pandemic. Yes. Thanks, David. <laughs>